Okay, we are live right now. We'll just wait a little bit for some people to join. Hi, Luke. Hi, Hope. Hey, guys. Um, well, thank you. Welcome to our fourth caviar tasting. And um, we just sold out of this one, too, which was really, really exciting. Um, we love to see how we hope that you guys have been enjoying them and to to see see how you like them. Let us know um, in the comments if there's anything that you want us to go over more. If you have any questions or if there are any flights in particular that you're interested in, um, we try to schedule these, you know, out in advance. And we are really excited about all the chefs that we have lined up. But we would welcome any any comments. So. Um, yeah, we're really excited today to have Chef Raj from Michael Mina join. Um, you know, we really, really love being able to incorporate chefs with, with us for these flights because um, we really want to do whatever we can to, to contribute to this industry. You know, it is more of a, I would say, more of a community than an industry with hospitality, with chefs and how they... Um, how they work together and and their creativity and and love for serving people and and doing really neat things so anyway without further ado i will get raj on um as i said earlier he's from michael mina um, the mina group is a really cool group of restaurants all around the country so i'm sure many of you have had the pleasure of getting to go to one of their restaurants somewhere in in the country and um raj is a really great friend of ours and he's we always say he's just so wonderful he um sat down with Saskia and i when we first started our company you know we were very intimidated to go to a restaurant like michael mina but he was so nice gave us the time of day and and now we work together and and here we are you know a few years later so um i let me get raj on here and he can kind of introduce himself and also do this. Let's see, Raj, I just um, accepted your request, so hopefully it comes up soon. Hey, Petra. Hi. How are you? Hey, everyone. How are you? So good. How are you? Good. I'm so happy that you're doing this. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. We're live from Mina Test Kitchen. All right. Well, um, I would love to hear more. We kind of gave some some insight up to what you're going to be demoing today with the corn pudding, but I would really kind of love to hear some more background on the dish and how you initially came to, to pair something like that because it's obviously an unusual pairing. It's not something that you see all the time. So would love some background there. For sure. Um, well, it starts here, Petra, and I think the challenge was how do we serve something with your amazing caviar? And today we're featured with Kaluga, that doesn't overpower the caviar, but gives kind of gives you a different as a different taste for for what you're going for. Everyone kind of does the creme fraiche, they've done the bellinis, um, but I think the challenge was how do we do savory summer ingredients with caviar? So that's how it came to be, and we said, okay, well, let's use corn. Great. I, think, I think when you have the dish, we did it as a flan or like a set custard. Um, and when we were kind of putting this together, we weren't quite sure what we were going to do. Um, today, we're going to feature it as a pudding. So we figured that kind of be a fun way to introduce it um, from everyone who's who has a blender um, and for anyone who wants to look at corn a little bit differently. So that's, uh, that's today's demo. Great. And some background too, when Saskia and I first went to Michael Mina to have dinner, that's when Raj brought out this dish with the corn and caviar and Saskia and I were just like blown away and fell in love with it. And so when we were talking about doing this, we thought corn, the corn pudding is the perfect, perfect thing to show because, and it is coming into season and summertime. And it, it's like you say, it's a perfect summer savory dish. It's fun, uh, and it's really simple, so don't be intimidated. A lot of times when we work with caviar, a lot of folks, because it's about luxury, get really intimidated to work with it. Um, we're hoping to put together something that, would, that anyone could do at home. So um, it's fun, it's easy, it's simple. You don't need to spend a lot of time in a kitchen to prepare it, and you can have a little bit more fun of your guests if you're entertaining, so. Great. Well, go ahead and, and show us what, how, how the magic happens. 
All right. So here's our lineup today, guys. Um, an amazing uh, selection that was sent over, a little shopping pantry um, for today's tasting. Um, left to right, we'll go white sturgeon. Um, in the middle is the salmon roe. Then on the right is my preferred caviar, um, which I love, which is the Kaluga hybrid. Um, there's that one. And of course, uh, Patriot, you're always so amazing to us that you gave us a really generous little tin here too. So um, I like this caviar because it has an amazing texture. Obviously, texture is a lot with caviar. The balance is really kind of in the middle of the road. It has nuttiness, buttery, um, and then the pop. And if you look at the size of the eggs, um, it's pretty substantial for farm caviar. You don't really see caviar of that size. Yeah, we All love right. the size and the texture. Definitely a big, big aspect to the Kaluga. Um, corn. So in the spirit of Coachella, we brought in some Coachella white corn. Obviously, in, in the Bay Area, Brentwood's probably the preferred corn, but that would be a yellow corn. Today, we're going to do it with white corn. So step one would be to peel or shuck your corn. If you don't want to do it, I'm sure your farmer or someone at the, the market will do it for you. Um, and you just kind of take a mandolin and you grate it. So corn, shucked, kind of grated. You just want the kernels. Uh, about three ears will give you about a cup of juice. I don't know if you can see that or not. And so for someone like me, I'm really afraid of a mandolin because, you know, you hear all the terrible stories. If you don't, have a mandolin or feel comfortable with a mandolin. Can you also just use a knife it and get all the get all the kernels off? Uh, one hundred percent, yeah. And we can do that over here and give you a little demo too. So if you don't have a mandolin because they're they're obviously quite scary. Um, <laughs> a normal knife is fine. Um, you know, I hold them up and just kind of just cut down on it. Okay, great. All right. So next step. After you have your your kernels, will be to get yourself a blender. Um, put your kernels inside the blender. And if you have a juicer, you can certainly use a juicer. I just kind of figured um, it's probably a little bit easier and, and easier to clean that you kind of use a blender for this demo. So. It's about a cup worth of corn. You spin it, kind of get it moving. And then you take that mash and then pass it through a, a sieve or a strainer. You just kind of want to break it up a little bit, and ultimately you're just getting corn juice. So it's just a little mess that you don't have to like really heavily blend it. Not so much. You're, there's a ton of water in it, so after you put it inside your sieve, you can pretty much see that you're going to get the juice. So now you have corn juice. Okay, cool. Can everyone, can everyone see that? Yeah, that's a good shot. Okay. So then you take the pot. And because it's such a small amount, we'll just kind of bring it to the stove top and, and bring it down. And so how warm is the stove top right now? That still is probably 500 degrees, but when it comes up, it essentially reduces and kind of the cornstarch thickens itself. You can see it, how it's already starting to thicken. Okay. So like at home, would you put your stove top on like medium to high for that? If you had a burner, medium to high works. Okay. When it's finished, what you're going to have, and this is kind of scaled up, but you're going to have a thickened pudding. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So depending, depending on how much juice you generate from your blender, and we did a really small amount for that demo. Um, and recipes are going to be available online, Petra. Yes, so. we will email the recipe out, and then we'll also post it on our Instagram for people to refer back to. And it naturally thickens. Um, you have a choice. You can either season it with uh, a little bit of salt, and you can go butter, or you can go olive oil. This one, uh, we chose uh, just to use it in olive oil, the Bona Fortuna, Chef Adam Sobel's uh, Nona Rosa olive oil. It's neutral. Um, awesome. Um, we're very lucky to have it. And we're going to kind of just keep it dairy-free. Uh, but again, if you want to go indulge yourself, add butter, add creme fraiche, have fun with it. Not a big deal. Great. And then do you do anything le with the leftover kernels that were like that were blended that you get the the what juice from? So it's kind of funny that you said that. So if you have the leftover kernels, we took them, we dried them and we puffed them so you can make popcorn out of it. Oh, cool. OK. Um, it's like, kind of like cracked, but you can kind of see it when you're done drying it. Oh. Cool. I will try that. It's a little bit more tedious to do, but for the adventurous home cook, you certainly can, uh, can have fun with it. Make homemade popcorn. Um, all right. So let's let's go to plate. What do you guys, any questions so far? Let's see. I haven't seen any um, questions come up yet, but... If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll read them out to Chef Raj so, so that he can get, get those answered for you. All right, let's go to plate. Let's, it's, this is kind of, again, when, when we first started to do the dish with you, Petra, I think when you had the tasting menu at Michael Mina, we did it as a set custard. So um, you certainly could take this uh, corn, thickened corn juice. You could add the cream and the egg yolk and bake it like you would like a creme brulee or, or like any custard. For today, we're just going to do it. And because it's the first of the season, and it's so sweet. We're just going to kind of kind of plate it. So it was like a pudding. Oh, and we do have a question here. Someone asked if they can use the white and yellow corn. Absolutely. Whatever your preference is, I think um, the season kind of starts with white, then it goes into yellow. Um, I prefer yellow, but... Uh, I think the white's really, really nice to showcase the caviar, too. Okay, great. And then another question was, how much olive oil or butter would you add to that much pudding? So to this much pudding, which is essentially two, maybe three, two cups, uh, a quarter of a cup of olive oil. Okay, so, great. So pretty, pretty generous. And, and, and you can scale that back, too. That's just kind of because I like a really silky texture. Okay, you can certainly good. just add, add a tablespoon. And you, you can just like judge by the consistency. You're you adding the olive oil or butter to make it a little bit more silky and creamy. Silk, at creamy, silky. Um, it adds a little bit of acidity. Um, if your corn's not so great, a chef trick would be to add a, a little bit of lime juice to it, um, just to kind of give you that, that little pop of the sweetness. But um, when the corn is really good, you don't need to really add much to it at all. Okay, and you would add that after you've made the like after you've added the after, olive oil and pudding. Yeah, so essentially what 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 we brought here is this is cold, and when it came off the stove, you would take it off the stove. You don't need to strain it because you already you already strained it in the in the past, and you just put it on on an ice bath, chill it down, and I think at 